Okay, here to repair today I have a Philips 37 inch plasma television. It's 37 PF 9975. It's based on Aeolus Hitachi Fujitsu panel technology. The fault with this particular model is that it will run for about 10 minutes, perfect picture, and then shut down. So we'll talk about diagnosing that. When dealing with any TV repair, it's essential to break the problem down into the composite possible causes. So this TV, it powers up, works fine, you can view the picture, the sound is perfect for 10 minutes or so. You know, the exact time varies, it's not specific. And since the exact time varies, we can pretty much eliminate something like the sleep time of being accidentally enabled, which would be a rather easy fix, unfortunately, it's not that in this case. For this model, um, the time is, in, is dependent on how warm it is generally. Uh, so in a cold day, it will run for longer. So we'll talk about diagnosing that because it's obviously something temperature intermittent. These TVs run quite hot, so as they warm up, components get hotter and they can malfunction if they are failed. Normally, components are quite tolerant of getting warm because they've been designed to run at a reasonable ambient temperature but they wear out after some time in some cases or if they are poorly designed they will wear out much quicker than they are supposed to ok, uh, on this model um, what it will do just before, well about 5 minutes before the 10 or so minutes it powers up, it gives problems, you'll get a kind of loud buzzing sound emitted from this coil here you can just hear it from the back several feet away, it's very annoying um, and it sounds like electrical arcing, but it's not. What these coils do is they kind of act like a look, look like a loudspeaker. When a high current passes through them, uh, um, they move, they expand, and when it and it um, goes back, they contract. So acts a little like a loudspeaker. So you can hear the current flowing through them. Now it's normal to hear a kind of slight buzzing from a power supply. It's pretty typical. Um, when you hear a very loud buzzing, it's unlikely that was designed in because. Uh, after all, you wouldn't be able to watch TV that well um, with a very loud buzzing coming from the TV. So it does indicate usually there's a fault with that particular portion. Just before it shuts down, the buzzing gets even more intense and it just it builds up, builds up, up and up and up, and then it just turns off. So it does uh, indicate that it is a um, problem with that. Either the well, it's unlikely to be the coil because it is essentially a piece of wire. There's nothing in there to fail. Uh, the wire could burn out, but then it wouldn't make any sound at all. So it indicates a problem somewhere with this portion of the circuit, which is known as the power factor correction circuit. Essentially, if you don't have this circuit on a power supply, you'll draw large peaks of current near the peaks of the sine wave, which tend to uh, emit quite a lot of um, uh, radio interference and so uh, the emissions regulations require that that peak current is, is either limited by spreading it out over a longer period of time which requires a, a rather large coil um, such as this one which is a computer power supply which has a little explosion near it but uh, or you can use what's called an active power factor collection circuit which is use a much smaller coil, I mean, that doesn't look much smaller, but it costs much less to make. You have to use a MOSFET diode there and a controller chip to do it, uh, because you switch at a higher frequency rather than using a lower frequency. Also, these work much better. You can typically get power factors of 99% or more, uh, 0.99 or more, um, whereas those coils tend to be about 0 0.7, 0 0.8, uh, which is good enough for the regulation, but it's not perfect. OK, I'm going to power it up now. What I've got here is I've hooked a current transformer um, up to the live wire. You can hook it to the neutral too. Basically a current transformer divides the current flowing through this wire. So if it's drawing, it's a 3000 to 1 transformer. So if it's drawing 3 amps along here, I'll receive 1 milliamp through here. And uh, the scope is hooked up here. Now, the oscilloscope doesn't have a current compatible input. It's very high impedance. So what I've done is I've tied a low ohm resistance, I think 4.7k ohm, but the exact value is not critical because we're not doing exact measurements, we'll just look at the shape of the waveform. So this will convert the current into a voltage and the scope will then display the voltage. By the way, it's a Rigol DS1102E, very recommended. Very, I like the scope a lot. Anyway, I'll plug the unit in. I've got an RCD here because I like working on my TVs uh, with an RCD. 
it's a safety thing. You see as it powers up, there's a few variations for current waveform. I've hooked a DVD player up to it, so we'll get a bright picture on the screen instead of a no signal display. Uh, so as it, as it finishes power up, yeah, that's the display we see. And that's functioning normal. The problem with this TV is as a particular component warms up, and I'll show you in a minute what component it is, it begins to malfunction. So we can accelerate the process and help diagnose the cause using a hairdryer. So take this hairdryer and I'll heat up the component and watch the waveform. Can you see the distortion? And you can hear the loud, I don't know if it will come out in the video, but there's a very loud buzzing coming from that coil there. And you see there's significant distortion to the waveform. It's now it's a very high frequency uh, portion of oscillations um, being in the middle of the waveform. Now, uh, the problem with those oscillations is they're causing the TV to uh, receive a sag. Um, it's supposed to get about 390 volts across those caps. They begin to sag. Uh, as the oscillation increases and so the power supply is no longer able to supply the power to the plasma panel and um, the power to the logic. One thing I forgot to mention was that the picture is absolutely perfect just until it fails. So it tells me it's more likely some kind of lockout or cutout is detecting the low voltage rather than the power supply is incapable of working on that voltage. But nonetheless, it's still a fault. And so what I'm going to do is heat up even more and we'll watch it. See how it's really bad. In a second the TV, it's really high frequency now, you barely hear it. And the TV will click off in a second I think. Yeah, well, it didn't click off but the current now dropped to nearly zero and I can see there's no longer any light coming through that little hole which usually lights up when the plasma panel lights up. And so now the TV is in a lockout mode, the LED is still lit. Uh, it's still green. It's not blinking an error code, which is an interesting one. Phillips usually blink an error code. Uh, if I then reset this, drop the power to the TV, got to wait for it to click out, you'll hear. Yeah. So you know it's run out of power. It usually won't power back up again. Uh, and you see that? Yeah, it's just clicking on and off. So it's obviously in an error condition while those capacitors are warm. I'm almost out of free space, so I won't do it now, but. When I froze away those capacitors again, after a few seconds, it powered right up again. So I'm pretty sure it's those two capacitors there. Now let's take a look at why those two capacitors could fail. Well, I'll just unplug it now. They are what's known as Class X2, which is the correct type to use on the input to a power supply. However, they're only 400 volt rated, and uh, they're after the rectified DC. Uh, from the transformer rather than taking AC uh, and class X capacitors can withstand AC of a higher amplitude than they can withstand DC so they probably could have used polypropylene uh, capacitors instead uh, and they've only chosen, since they've only chosen a 400 volt rating and the rectified DC after the bridge rectifier can be, well in the UK it can be as high as 350 volt it's quite close, any kind of large transient which you get hundreds of times a day in any, even in a good electrical system like we do have in the UK, you get hundreds of transients a day and it just wears out the capacitors, they get little holes in them which reduces their capacitance, they're no longer um, in, this, in this application they're used to supply uh, transient power to the uh, PFC, they're basically decoupling it, I won't get into the theory of decoupling but essentially you've got like meters long of power cable going hundreds of meters down to the substation uh, and if you try and draw current along that you'll create a significant voltage drop not due to resistance but due to inductance and when you try and release that current you'll get a spike so these capacitors basically provide a very transient um, power supply um, but if they're failed you will get those spikes and those dips and so the power factor correction will no longer be able to supply those high frequency pulses of current and it will drop out. And the reason we'll see that weird large spike is because the power factor correction was essentially dropping to the point of being completely useless and you will see a non-power factor corrected waveform. And so the TV, uh, instead of getting 390, starts getting 325 to 260. And if there is an under voltage lockout somewhere on here, it's then locking out the TV and we're stuck in this mode where it just clicks. I don't know if it'll do it again. Yeah. 
Oh, it's actually going to power up again. Uh, and we see it's uh, it's, it's already dodgy because it's only it's only cooled down a little. So when it's working, uh, it's gonna oh, it's actually working fine. Let's just heat up again. A few seconds left on the camera. You see that immediately, pretty much. Non-power factor corrected right there. TV clicks off. Hope this helps.